If you're old enough to remember the early 90s like me, then you might remember things like the start of the World Wide Web, kind of just a bit of a nerdy project, and also Nirvana releasing Nevermind. It doesn't seem that long ago when you say that, does it? But what about the bikes? It didn't feel like we'd come that far from the early 70s and those clunkers bombing down the hills in Northern California, to those 90s bikes. So how far have we come from the 90s bikes to right now? Thanks to Kona, we're going to take a look at this absolute classic Kona Hey Hey from the early 90s and compare that to its namesake, the bang up to date 2022 Kona Hey Hey, to see how they compare and if we can even call these things cross country bikes anymore. Modern mountain bikes have become so capable, especially cross country bikes. It wasn't so long ago they were so focused on speed and lack of weight, they're actually a complete handful when the terrain got technical. But mountain biking and the sport progresses, and you can see just how good the riders and bikes are at the moment. It's not just about racing heart rates anymore, but also adrenaline. I think to even call these modern bikes cross-country bikes is doing them a little bit of a disservice. They're just so much more capable all round. But let's go back in time and take a look at that lovely retro Kona Hey Hey. Right, here it is. This is the 1991 Kona Hey Hey. And if you're into retro bikes, then this is one of the special bikes. It's pretty crazy to look at some proper nostalgia for me because I was into Konas of this era. I even have one at home myself, but nowhere near as fancy as this Hey Hey, because this was one of the ones to have. This is titanium frame. In fact, there's loads of titanium parts on here. Thanks to Sandor, the guy who owns this bike for lending us the bike. They're really hard to come by. And this one is super exotic. It's full XTR. A lot of titanium parts, you've got bars, that velocity stem, I had one but not titanium for sure. The post, all from the same era, full XDR build, this is really special. It is a beautiful thing to look at, but to ride is a different matter. I've done some videos where I've ridden bikes in this era, and just to compare them to the modern bikes, it's so hard to do because they were great for the time, but things have come so far. And one of the biggest differences is really in the cockpit. So the stem is 130 mil on this bike compared to the 50 on the new bike. And the bars are only 600 mil wide. Of course, no drop of post, so the seat is way up there. This bike is super fast cross country until it gets the technical parts. You've got cantilever brakes on a bike this old and fair dues to sandal. These feel absolutely immaculate, but I know from experience that they just don't work, especially in the rain when your rims get dirty and horrible, they just stop working. Even on the back of the bike, you see this, it's called a brake booster because when you pulled your brakes so hard because they weren't stopping you down, you just pull harder, actually the frame bosses would flex. So the cantilever brakes kind of just splay out and work even let even worse so the brake booster keeps everything in tow stops them from flexing it kind of helps them a bit but it just don't work very well the gears are amazing of course this is way before the one by 12s or one by at all and they still work really well uh it's just the difference in range you have to have a three by up front but one of the biggest differences i find is kind of obviously the new bike got a 29er so bigger rollover Great big tyres as well that are super light, but you give, get so much more traction. But also it's the BB drop. On the 29er bike, it feels like you're in the bike. When you're hitting terrain, it doesn't feel like you're gonna get pinged over the bars. With this bike, of course, it's 26 inch and the bottom bracket is almost level with the axle. So again, if you ride this into rough stuff, it really feels like you can get going over the bars. Just kind of doesn't give you any confidence. But back in the day, we knew no better. It's only when you line the two bikes up side by side, you can see how far we've come. And the modern cross country bike really doesn't look at all like the retro bike. In fact, the retro mountain bike has more in common geometry wise with a road bike. The early 90s Konas had a unique shape, designed by Joe Murray with the sloping top tubes. It was a cool brand to me, the Hawaiian names, the graphics. My first proper bike was a splatter painted Kona Lava Dome, so the brand still feels special to me. But the Hey Hey was next level compared to my bike, but it was progressive geometry at that time. Even the Project 2 fork was seen as something pretty cool to have. Although this comes with a top spec RockShox Mag 21 SL tie. 
Thai are standing for titanium, the creme de la creme of that time and it's a good example of how far we've come. Just compare that to the new SID. The SL Thai had a titanium lower fork, 46mm of travel but it was quick release. Just look at how big the SID is compared to it. 120mm of travel with a bolt through axle which is so much better and stiffer. The new bike is about 2kg heavier than the old bike. 13 kilograms compared to about 11, but so much more capable and it doesn't seem that much when you look at what you get. Disc brakes, big wheels and tires with so much more grip, a proper suspension fork and rear suspension is so much stronger and more capable. The angles of the bike, well, yeah, steep, steep and steeper. You just like, this was rapid on a flow bit of single track, but anything else, your weight is forward, it's gnarly. Uh, Unfortunately, this bike is worth so much money, I can't ride it. Actually, sand or the own does take it out sometimes for a dry summer spin. But you know what? I'm not that bothered. I think I'm sport rotten with a new bike that, although I love the retro stuff, I love looking at it, maybe to collect, I'm not that bothered about riding it. And this is the bang up to date 2022 Kona Hey Hey CRDL. It's 120 mil travel front and rear 29er. It's actually got three 24 hour world championships in the hands of Corey Wallace. So it's got some proven pretty epic race pedigree. It's also got a carbon fiber frame. So it's got, you know, those weren't around in the 90s. That strength and weight combo was just not an option. And if like me, you're around in the early 90s, you probably remember some of these star bikes getting ridden very hard and actually getting and bent and broken pretty often. Of course, this bike looks completely different from the early 90s bike. Just the geometry as much as anything. Bikes are longer with shorter stems. They're slacker. Uh, even looking at details like the front of the bike, you've got an internal headset. So back in the old days, you used to press them into the bike. Now everything is much slicker. Also, it's got reduced stack height. So riders could just, they've got more options for bar height compared to the old bikes. You've got a tapered head tube. Didn't have those back in the day. So you've got strength and rigidity where you need it. If anyone remembers the early 90s as well, I used to have a bike and in the UK riding them in winter, there was actually a market in people selling you neoprene covers to go around the bottom because those bearings just wear out with water getting in there all the time. So this bike looks completely different. And what other changes? Well, of course, this is a 29er. Back in the 90s, there were no wheel size options. Although saying that for cross country now, there kind of isn't either because everyone runs a 29er. Hydraulic disc brakes, you've got bolt through to stiffen everything up. You've got 15 mil at the front, 12 at the rear. Hydraulic disc brakes that actually work. You've got electronic gears, SRAM axis on here. That was unheard of again back in the 90s. One by system, everyone was running three by nine back in the day. Loads of gears, loads of options kind of really faffy and pointless to use most of the time so now you've got obviously the wide range set 1x12 electronic gears to me it feels like most of these improvements have been just like an evolution over the years of course we've had some jumps here and there but the components have improved things like through axles have improved the stiffness things and suspension on a modern cross-country bike is pretty common now of course back in the day it wasn't everything was hardtails or fully rigid and even with suspension design so Kona used what they call a fuse independent suspension system so all designed around a modern cross-country trail rider to make it fast and efficient so it's a single pivot design but actually uses the flex of the seat stay you can see how it sort of the the tubing shape differs to get that flex in there so it saves the weight of having a pivot there all right enough talking it's time to ride this thing
Don't get me wrong, I love the retro bikes, but looking at the old Hey Hey and imagine what it feels like to ride doesn't really bring back that good memories. The new Hey Hey with 120mm of travel puts it out there in the down country trail bike region I suppose, but don't let that fool you into thinking the bike is sluggish. I can't imagine the old bike trying to cover ground as quickly and have a riot doing it. We really shouldn't take modern mountain bikes for granted.